So have you ever wondered exactly how a Bronco tows? You know, does it tow well? Does the suspension squat down? Does it lose its acceleration? In the bendies, do you get dragged left and right? And how are those brakes? Essentially, is it safe? We're also gonna cover, is it reliable to be pulling often with a Bronco? We're gonna talk 2.3 liter engine and 2.7 liter engine, so you are not gonna wanna miss out. And we'll also cover a little bit why we tow. But just before we get into all that, I'm gonna share why I got this ATV for the channel. Essentially, I had the premonition that if I kept playing around in sand pits with the Bronco, I would eventually flip it, roll it, abuse it, bottom it out. Now the Bronco is very capable off-road, but when you don't have off-road insurance and scrapping the vehicle could cost you, you know, the price of the entire vehicle. I didn't want to go through a total loss. So I figured I've got a pretty big need for speed. I like to goof off. So I've got this ATV now. If any of you are thinking uh, of off-roading your Bronco, right on. You're gonna have a blast, but play it safe. Now I know myself and I know that I do have a bit of a tendency to goof off. Uh, and you know, I kind of spotted it and caught it just in time. I got this ATV for the channel to take you deeper into the woods to be able to take you places the Bronco can't go and to avoid ruining the Bronco. And well, <laughs> it, it had to happen. You know, this uh, this ATV is gonna take us to bron places the Bronco cannot, but it had to happen. I did crash the ATV this the second time out and the first time out, the ATV actually stopped working and that's okay. I knew that it could have electrical problems even when it's brand new, but that was part of my buying process. I weighed all the pros and cons and I figured if I'm getting three to $5,000 of extra ATV when it comes to parts that I want, equipment that I want, that I could handle a few electrical problems. The Polaris has a fantastic engine. Uh, the CVT transmission, as much as I hate CVT transmissions, you basically have no choice to go when you're running uh, uh, an ATV. You have to go CVT unless you get the Honda, but the Honda only has 27 horsepower. Whereas this, this has 44 horsepower, comes with about four, three thousand dollars of accessories that I wanted, and is about you know five thousand dollars total less in accessories than if I, and vehicle if I would have got a more reliable ish, uh, machine. Now the Honda didn't have enough machine, but here's the accident I had. Thankfully it was not with the Bronco. So yes, the Bronco can tow and we'll talk all about how the Bronco tows, but thank goodness I got this machine to goof off with instead of ruining the Bronco. Okay, so not sure if you can see out that back window, but we are towing a uh, four-wheeler and uh, a trailer, of course. So we're towing right now, we're towing a little over 1,500 pounds. I'll try to calculate the exact weight, but I'd es guesstimate it at about 1,700 pounds. And while it's going really well, uh, it should be around, you know, towing 1,500 pounds or not towing, I notice it in the acceleration, but fuel economy wise, it's not a huge difference. I'll convert it to the at the bottom, but I'm getting 18.2 liters per 100 kilometers out of the last 33.9 kilometers so i'll convert that into miles but we'll talk more about that at the end of this trip uh fun trip bronco is an excellent machine to pull your toys the 2.7 liter has a ton of power and i'm confident the 2.3 liter would still pull quite well you know it is in the ford ranger and it's rated to pull 7500 pounds in the ford ranger in the bronco Yes, the Bronco weighs more than the Ranger by about a thousand pounds if you're looking at a four-door Bronco, but I'm confident 2.3 will tow. What I can tell you is I, now this is the second time I pull with the 2.3 liter and I've done over hundred kilometers or about 70 miles, 65 miles uh, of towing once this is all done and the 2.7 liter is a beast. I'll give it a little gas now. and it still accelerates like there's nothing behind it. It's a joke. Remember, this 2.7 liter in an F-150 2021 can pull up to 10,400 pounds. So it's a joke uh, pulling, you know, 1,500 or 3,500 pounds in a Bronco. Now, the reason the Bronco can't tow more, 
it's more a question of safety in regards to the suspension that's on the Bronco and the brakes. So that's why a Bronco 2.7 liter doesn't pull, you know, some ridiculous number like seven, eight, nine, ten thousand 10,000 pounds. Uh, because the transmission, same transmission, same motor as in an F-150 and in an F-150, it's pulling 10,400 pounds. So the thing is, if you pull 3,500 pounds with a 2.7 liter in the Bronco, it's a joke how well it goes. Uh, very, very smooth, fast acceleration. You're going to have a blast. So I hope, that, I hope this has been helpful. And you know, if you want to follow, I've got a video on how my four reeling went. I didn't go over the handlebars, but I did drive. Uh, wasn't a lake, but I definitely drove into a bit of a stream. Uh, had to get pulled out, uh, not injured. Uh, so that reminds you whether you're driving a vehicle uh, or you're driving, uh, you know, anything with a motor. And even I've hurt myself on a mountain bike. So what, no matter what you're driving. Be careful, uh, take care, and until next time, I wish you all more cars and more power. And you can catch that four wheel, four wheeling video uh, just by clicking on you know one of the videos that's uh, going to be probably right after or right before this. Okay, let's talk fuel economy. Normally, we're getting 15 liters per hundred kilometers. I'll just put that down in miles per gallon at the bottom. But this thing. You know, while we're towing, not a huge difference. 17.7 .7 liters per 100 kilometers. So very small difference when towing. Now we are towing about 1,700 pounds and it tows fantastically. You know, it's got all sorts of power. You know, I'll show you in just a moment how it accelerates, but this thing accelerates so easily. And in the bendies, nice bendy, huge bendy coming up right here. Even though we've got, you know, a good percentage of the vehicle's weight, you know, this weighs about 5,400 pounds, we've got 1,700 pounds behind us, and in the corner, I am not being pulled left or right at all. You know, normally, the weight transfer, even when you're empty, driving quick, pulls to the opposite side, so the weight, there should be a weight transfer to the left here. Now, the trailer would also increase that weight transfer but next to no weight transfer because a Ford Bronco has torque vectoring, meaning when needed, your front upper inner wheel, so front inner wheel will break slightly to keep the weight of the vehicle balanced pretty evenly on all four wheels. So that is some amazing tech. Now just to show you, prove to you, 17.7 .7 liters per 100 kilometers, last 44 kilometers of driving and I have not been easy. I've been doing acceleration tests as you see right here. That's accelerating pretty quick. So pulling this four-wheeler went extremely well. Now if you are going to spend the day four-wheeling and if you do spend an extra hour goofing off because you know you drive into a stream, you should probably have the good idea to come home with a little bit of food because that will buy you some points. Instead of coming home and saying, hey, where's dinner? Uh, when are, what are we having? When are we having it? If you bring home dinner, it'll get you out of a lot of trouble. So this thing pulled fantastically and I've got to say, reliability. <laughs> this Polaris machine, you know, the, the Bronco's reliability on the 2.7 liter has been put into question because of people who've had problems. But overall, what's important isn't if someone you know or someone you read on the internet had a uh, or a couple problems with the engine. So a couple people, a couple problems, not an issue. You gotta look at those ratios. Um, because sometimes you gotta look, you know, when it's only a few people, sometimes there's a reason behind it. And the best example is this Polaris machine was deemed very unreliable and just total crap by someone on the internet. And how they put it is there's no reason for the engine to break whatsoever. Crap machine, because after they hit a rock and the engine let out all its oil, that they, it wasn't long that they kept on driving and it wasn't before long that the machine stopped working. And their conclusion was crap machine unreliable. Well, the air there is between the seat and the steering wheel. So you gotta look at percentages. You've gotta treat this a little bit like science. So you can't just look at a very small sample because often the error is on the owner. So for example, after I drove the, it, this into the stream, not deliberately, obviously, I slid off trying to avoid that big, fat, wide side-by-side. -side. And you know, 
Of course, I took the time to review my machine. You know, did I have anything pierced? Was I leaking any liquids, oils, r radiator liquid? I thoroughly went through the machine. So even though I, you know, here, Marie, Pierre and I each have our own Bronco and I do drive both of them. You know, if both my 2.7 liter engines were to blow, that doesn't mean the 2.7 liter is bad. It means that there's a likelihood, but we need to look at why? Because, you know, once again, it could be purely owner error. And um, in this case, the 2.7 liter, overall, if you know, you can't just take a very small sample, science would definitely say that's not a okay. You know, you got to be all right and treat this right. You got to look at the big numbers, you know, what percentage are having default. So the 2.7 liter pulled great, pulled easily has been reliable across tens of thousands no sorry more likely hundreds of thousands of engines uh f-150s edges lincoln's you've got a whole lot of models using the 2.7 liter and i've talked to some head techs at different dealerships and they've had next to no problems <laughs> with the 2.7 liter so there is occasional issues but hey occasional issues can arise from like you know some goofball like me buying their Bronco 2.7 liter. And if I were to do this every single weekend, or even if I only did it two or three times and didn't look at the temperature gauge, I could have an unreliable, so-called unreliable engine or transmission, but it'd be because I had overheated those parts. So stay tuned for more helpful information. Marie Pia is gonna be pulling off the stickers to her Bronco because this is now her Bronco. And, you know, we will be just showing you how to remove the sticker safely, how to have a little fun doing it, as you can see right here. But we'll show you all about what to do, how to take them off. Once you've gotten them off, there will be glue residue, residue. And I'll show you how to take that residue off. So hopefully if any of you are thinking of putting on stickers, well, that part's pretty easy. It's just peel in place. But we'll show you how to take them off. And that's the update. We took the stickers off the Bronco. Hope you like it. Hope you'll still follow us. And we wish you all, of course, more cars and more power. And during this holiday season, we hope you get to have fun with friends and family. So until next time, thank you for all the support. Thank you for hitting that like button and for subscribing. And we'll catch you in the next video. Gotta teach them when they're young.